If you're a motion graphic designer, using After Effects just makes sense. You're really only going to be dealing with a few applications such as Apple Motion, you could be dealing with Blackmagic Design Fusion, or even Nuke. But Adobe's After Effects is the most common application for motion graphics because it comes packaged with the Creative Cloud, which a lot of people use whether they're using Photoshop or Premiere or specifically After Effects. Now that's great if we're talking about motion graphics designers, but what about editors? Well, you know what? If this was 10 to 15 years ago, I probably would have told you, you know what? Maybe you don't need to learn After Effects because maybe you have a graphics department that's gonna do all of that work for you, hypothetically if you're working for a large company. The problem these days is that as budgets have been slashed, we as editors find ourselves wearing more hats than we have in the past and one of those hats now has moved on to being a motion graphics designer. Not only do we need to know how to edit, but we need to know how to do motion graphics as well, including elements like lower thirds. Now, one thing I try to tell people, especially if they're gonna to start to incorporate After Effects into their workflow, is to think of things like this. You only wanna do the most basic of effects inside of your nonlinear editing application. Maybe a few titles, but mostly really cuts and dissolves. Anything that you wanna do that's compositing work, such as green screen, motion tracking, creating lower thirds, you're going to want to do those inside of Adobe's After Effects. Why? Well, it's just a more powerful motion graphics application. There you go, specifically designed for motion graphics. You have a lot more choice and a lot more flexibility when it comes to things like effects work inside of After Effects. Not only do you have the standard effects to work with, but there are hundreds, and dare I even say, thousands of different plugins out there for you to use, including plugins that will let you create things like 3D extruded text, realistic looking lens flares, and even getting in and creating stylistic looking effects like film looks and even damaged TV effects. All right, that's enough of our introduction. Let's now get in and let's talk about saving in After Effects. Now, you know, you're probably thinking, well, saving, that seems pretty obvious. What do we really need to talk about when it comes to saving projects? Well, there's a few important things that you're going to need to know to not only save your project properly, but to make sure that you're backed up just in case of a problem and even what you're going to do if you need to share projects with people using previous versions of the application.